Hello biologists, this is your teacher, Miss R, and I'm just going to give you a quick recap of what we did in Class Connect yesterday. That's Monday, September 23rd, 2013. We talked about photosynthesis and respiration, the energy of life, and we also talked about structure and function. This is prep for the quizzes 1.12, that's 112 and 114. We talked about photosynthesis a little bit. Photosynthesis, if you remember from seventh grade life science, is the process that plants do and only plants or organisms that photosynthesize like photosynthetic bacteria. Um, they use sunlight to combine water with carbon dioxide to make their own food, which is a chemical called glucose, it's sugar. So photosynthesis is using water and carbon dioxide and the energy of sunlight to combine them to make glucose. Humans can't do this, nor can any other animal. Here's a little picture recap for those of you who like pictures. Um, light energy helps the plant combine carbon dioxide with water to make sugar in the leaves, and in that process it releases oxygen. We use that glucose that's stored in plants and animals to make ATP in our cells through this process called cellular respiration. And we'll get a lot more details on cellular respiration later in Unit 2. But you just need to know for now that cellular respiration turns the glucose that we get from our food into ATP, that's adenosine triphosphate. The tri is for the three P's here. One, two, three. And plants break down their own glucose in the same way. They just store energy as, of glucose and then they turn it into ATP when they actually need to use the energy. Both plants and animals use energy for ATP for their energy currency. So if you want to get things done in a cell, you use ATP. You turn that glucose into ATP. It's kind of how you get things done in the community. If you want to buy something or get goods and services in a community, you take your dollars out and spend them. And that's how cells get things done. They spend their ATP. The way that cells spend their ATP is they break this bond between the second and third phosphate group, that's the P in ATP, and they make it into adenosine diphosphate. So it's that breaking down of ATP is how cells get energy in both plants and animals. So let's, re let's review for quiz 1.12. Which part of the microscope holds the slide? Is it this part? Is it the objectives? Is it the course focus? Or is it the eyepiece? Or you can select E, I don't know. We're going to talk a little bit about structure and function. Um, for those of you who are gamers, you can see that video game controls have changed a bit over time. The reason that game controls have changed is their function has changed. Games are more complex now, and so this Xbox controller, and this one's even a little bit old, has changed. It has more buttons, and you can do th more things with both hands because games have become more complex. So the structure of something will change as the function changes. Back to microscopes for a moment. Which objective do you use first? Do you use the fine objective, this long one here, also known as the high power objective? Do you use the coarse here, or do you use the scanning? That's the tiny little one. So those are objectives here on the microscope. Figure out which one you use first and select it. Here's a quiz practice quiz question. All organisms require what to survive? And we did talk about ATP, but in general, what does ATP supply a cell? You can choose an answer that works for you. How does a cougar get energy to survive? Do they get energy from the sun? 
Like A, do they eat plants? Do they eat animals that eat plants? Do they eat mushrooms, which are fungi? Or E, you didn't eat your Wheaties this morning and you need to go study some more. What form of energy do living things use as fuel? And I put a little diagram here that represents some of represents each form of energy here so you can make an informed decision on this question here. This question asks why are web feet a good idea for ducks but not for cats? And this is another structure function question. There's a structure, web feet, and they have a function. What is that function in ducks that they wouldn't do in cats? You can choose the answer that makes the most sense to you. I'll give you a hint. Ducks don't climb trees. How would you know which one is the desert plant? Forget the background for a moment. That sort of gives it away a little bit. But if you look at the leaves, what helps you decide which one might live in a tropical rainforest, which is not a big problem to lose water from your leaves if you're a plant, and which lives in a desert where it is a huge problem to lose water from your leaves if you're a plant. That's a little hint for this one. And it's a good structure function question. The structure, the size of the leaves in a plant, needs to vary based on the function. Leaves function in both places to gather sunlight for the plant, but they also lose water, which is okay if you're in a place where it gets a lot of water, so that function isn't as important, um, but the function of losing water needs to be minimized in a desert, and so you, you're, the structure of the leaves in a desert plant is going to be different. It gets back to that structure function idea. And we talked a little bit about skulls in class. How can you tell the teeth of a carnivore, their structure, from an herbivore? So one of these skulls in this picture is an elephant, and one is a cat. Cats are going to have different teeth because they're carnivores. They eat meat. They need to dig into their prey and hold on to it and then tear it into chunks. And an elephant eats grass and it's going to need to grind up its food with teeth that are good at grinding. So you can tell from looking at the cat skull and the elephant skull which teeth grind up grass, which are grinding teeth that are bigger and flatter, and which teeth need to hang on to prey. So I'm going to let you look at those carefully. You're going to notice the cat's teeth are much different than the elephant's teeth because they have different functions. Different structures, different functions. They eat different stuff, their teeth are going to look different. That's the basic idea behind structure function. Thanks for watching. You can see the structure of function of headphones has changed a bit here. This is the 1970s. I'm plugged into a giant wall stereo. Um, with my giant 1970s headphones and headphones have changed. Now we have these little earbuds that can plug into your very little portable stereo. So that's a little humorous uh, example of structure function. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.